Hi, everyone. Thank you for stopping by this poster. My name is Ao Liu. I'm the Deputy Director of Research at the Euclid Tech Labs. Today, I'm speaking on behalf of the team composed of members from both Euclid Tech Labs and also Argonne Wakefield Accelerator Facility at Argonne National Lab. I would like to first thank the IPEC committee for organizing this event and thank the program manager under Basic Energy Science Office of the DOE Office of Science um, fund for funding this project. Let me now continue to the talk. Um, some background information for the study. Uh, everybody should be um, very familiar with the concept of beam halo. Uh, the beam halo is basically described as a non Gaussian beam distributions around the beam core. I use this as an example, but uh, the, the figure to the right is a not actually a beam. This is actually a telescope image for the black hole. But people would think that the beam halo would look like a really halo structure, but actually uh, it might not necessarily look like that. Um, but however, people know the beam halo does many bad things, including uncontrolled loss in the beam line and create on one hit radiation, et cetera. So there are multiple destructive or non-destructive techniques developed and tested to measure the halo distribution. There are many pros for all these techniques, but I would now only emphasize the cons. For the non-destructive techniques, the cons are that most of those techniques are expensive and they require complicated setup and in the end, multiple copies of those measurement setups will not be feasible to be installed at the same facility. Those halo measurement methods include techniques like gas sheet monitor, digital micro mirror array, and etc. cetera. Um, the cons for destructive methods are that, well, first of all, they are destructive. So you won't be able to use the beam at all or the measurement will interrupt the normal beam operation. The destructive methods techniques include things like the use of a wire scanner, a yak screen, etc. People would ask, why don't we find an apparatus that have most of the advantages and only few disadvantages? That triggers our thoughts about this new device called Ideas Halo. Ideas stands for Iris Diaphragm E-Beam Apparatus Series. Um, HALO is an application of ideas on measuring the HALO distribution. The ideas HALO or the ideas itself was inspired by an actual iris diaphragm that is used in cameras. Uh, on the right, you can, you can see a real camera iris diaphragm for CAD drawing. The concepts of ideas HALO look like that, look like the following. In Ideas Halo, we use iris blades, which are shown um, on the bottom right with the brown yellowish color. We use those metallic iris blades to intercept outlier charges, which are halo part of the beam. And when we intercept those charges, current signals will be generated. And we will collect those current signals and measure the distribution accordingly. We use non-conductive thin films to isolate signals from adjacent blades so that they become independent measurements from each of the four blades in this um, logo of Ideas Halo. The iris will be able to open and close, and when it opens, it will let more beam pass. And when it closes, obviously, it will intercept more into the core all the way until when the user feels necessary to stop the motion. The iris is actuated by an USB compatible linear actuator uh, and the motion is high precision. So you can precisely control the opening or the aperture of the iris diaphragm. We can also use USB compatible piezoelectric positioners for even higher precision control, depending on what the requirements for the measurements are. So what are the advantages of using Ideas Halo Detector? First of all, compared to other techniques, 
idea silo is really cost effective. The modular design significantly brings the cost down. We're looking at a few thousand bucks for each of the halo design, including everything. It's of dual purpose. We can use it first as a halo or profile measurement tool, and also we can use it as a variable collimator for the beam. You can get, get rid of the halo distribution or any transverse distribution in the outliers that you don't want or that could be harmful in the end. It has high portability. Everything is mounted on a six inch complex six way cross or a four way cross, depending on whether you want, for example, a viewport to be there on the device. In the end, you will be still able to transport it in the trunk of your car. It is quite portable. It has also fast signal response features, such that when you measure the current signals, the timing structure of that signal preserves timing structure of the beam. For this whole project, we did a proof of principle version alpha test at the AWA cathode testbed. In this test, we used the one to two MeV electron beam bombarding a metal, the metal blades at various thickness made of different materials to test the principles of intercepting the beam using different materials and different thicknesses. So we found from the experiment that the current signal extracted from the blades to the SMA ports were as expected or indicated by the John Ford simulations with the, the respective materials and thicknesses. We used some ceramic insulation between the, the blades to isolate the signal. And you can actually find in the bottom left that the signals were insulated after you do a low pass filter on the signals. We will talk about this thin film insulation in the future slide. I would thank the AWA participants to help assembling and installing the uh, Ideas Halo version alpha. And our photo is shown on the top. So what about the thick film insulation between blades? Ideally, you want to use some thick ceramic plates to insulate um, the blades and stop the signals from coupling to each other. However, um, it, even for ceramic plates at very high frequencies, those will not be able to stop the signals from coupling into other blades. So in the end, we will have to deal with the low frequency part of the signal, which you can do some signal processing, data processing, later after the experiment or in situ. Our idea is to get rid of the ceramic plates between the blades because they will make the Irish mobility much harder to achieve. Euclid supports young scientists by hosting and supervising interns. Uh, this particular study was done and is being done by our intern student, uh, Mr. John Callahan, graduated freshly from Illinois Institute of Technology in 2020. I welcome everybody to look at his poster, um, THPAB 278. In his study, he used non-conductive material silicon dioxide and between the adjacent blades as the insulating material. He found that for DC to low frequencies, the insulation was very effective as we saw from the other experiments. The company will exist for high frequency. So as said, the processing is needed for extracting useful information, either in situ or afterwards. At Euclid, we have multiple sputtering systems but we are using particularly a so-called paprika arc sputtering system, which can be run in two modes. One is so called a nominal continuous wave arc sputtering mode. The other one is called a, a toss arc sputtering mode. Uh, Mr. Callahan has found recently that um, improved thin film quality can be expected from using the toss arc sputtering regime. In his study, he also found that the thin film generated by the house arf sputtering 
it adheres with the copper much better. When he did the thin film pull-up test with the DeFlasco adhesion tester, he found that the thin film could hold up to 3,000 kilopascal for one centimeter wide dolly. So the thin film binds with the copper very well, as you can see from the bottom, uh, bottom left. That's the after look, silicon dioxide coated copper plate. You can see that the thin films that are held by the dolly through epoxy has totally detached from the copper plate after the pull-up test. And that's the force or the pressure needed to pull up the thin film from the remainder of the full deposition. He also did some DC breakdown studies with the silicon dioxide thin film and found that they, the, the expected DC breakdown field is up to 350 megavolt per meter, which aligns with data published for bulk silicon dioxide in articles. We are expecting a newest version for of Ideas Halo, which we call it version 005. At UK, we are constantly optimizing the design to improve the mechanical stability, Irish mobility, mobility, Irish mobility support, and the vacuum compatibility, etc. There are two major designs after the version alpha was tested, which are the versions 004 and 005. 004 was tested at AWA and at Euclid's 1MEV beamline, and we found that clear individual signals after the low pass filter is applied can be expected from adjacent copper blades. 005 is the version we'd expect to work fully in ultra high vacuum and the all metal version of the 005 assembly has been fabricated and tested for the mobility under high vacuum. The full version with ceramic plates and insulation materials will be fabricated in the end of May and get tested at first Euclid MEV bunker and at ACT. In this newest 005 design, we incorporated a few key features, including a tangential driving mode for the iris to help to solve the mechanical issues when the driving force was linear with respect to the center of the iris. We used the ball bearings to reduce the friction between the plates. And we also used four pillars to locate and guide the sandwich structure and, and the rotating plate. So in the end, we found that the 005 assembly uh, worked pretty well, both in air and in vacuum. So now I'll play this in air version of the 005 iris mobility. So here you can see that iris can be opened and closed with the linear actuator mounted on the bottom of this reducer. So now let's go to the in vacuum version where the vacuum was held at low 10 to minus seven torr. I hope this is still visible. You can see the iris opening and the closing and which is driven by a linear actuator at the bottom. So moving forward, uh, we have been doing a lot of simulations for Ideas Halo at Euclid 2, um, which includes CSC and COMSOL for our simulations and the thermal simulations. We expect to use the CSC and the COMSOL to uh, calculate the coupling between the blades with the thin film insulation. So this will be used to guide our frequency response analysis down the road to understand there at each frequency what the coupling vector will be with this kind of insulation material. We also use the Wakefield module of CSC to calculate a version of IDEAS called IDEAS BPM, where the aperture is modified so that IDEAS works almost like a variable BPM pickup. We also do jump force simulations, which is shown to the right, to simulate the electron and IDEAS interactions the charge deposition and X-ray generation and energy deposition in the detector. Also in parallel, we are doing the density functional theory simulations 
or DFT simulation to estimate the thin film adhesion with the copper blade. So at UK, this Ideas Halo project has incorporated many other multidisciplinary research topics besides the accelerator physics, including material research, vacuum research, and simulation research. So the next move for Ideas Halo would be a few more experiments scheduled at uh, two facilities. One is the ACT facility. As usual, we are going to use the 1 MeV or 2 MeV beam with Pico's second scale um, timing structure. And this is scheduled for early July 2021. And we also test the same version at Duke University with the help from Dr. Ying Wu as the Duke PI. We will also test the full feature of the version 005 with a 200 MeV beam. This is going to be scheduled for late July 2021. So I welcome everybody to keep an eye on the progress of this project, and we hope to bring this product to every one of you so that you can use its nice features. That's all for my talk, and please leave your comments and questions in the chat, and I will be hopefully able to answer the questions in a timely fashion. And thank you again for stopping by and thank all the colleagues and the organizing committee and the program manager one more time. Thank you, take care.